That kind of heat, it's feeling good out here. Finally feeling like summer, hey Turbo. Not summer yet, but almost. It is steamy. Been in like the upper 90s, high humidity, and I was thinking that I didn't like that because last summer I didn't like it, and I remembered well I wasn't really supposed to be doing stuff outside last summer and the same as the summer before, so that was probably just like a mental, mental trick I had played on myself to not be upset about not being able to do yard work. It was, uh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Beautiful day. What is oh, turbo? A hot day. That's how it's been all week. I'm going to have to do things differently because this camera, these things overheat like crazy when it gets to be like over 95. So uh, I think this is probably going to be more of like a hangout vlog. I just peter around, get a few little things done. I have a broken drip line down here that I need to get reset. You can see the plants. They would probably really appreciate that. And then there's some questions to answer. Somebody asked where I got these fountain things. See this, the, that right there? I think that was Amazon. I'll try and find it or something similar and link it down below. There's two of them. Turbo loves these things. He's always knocking them over and pushing them down to the water. It's just hot outside having the extra circulation. Just something to break the surface tension helps cool the water off. It's not a lot of fun swimming a mile in water that's like 90 degrees. Champagne problems. Stupid thing to complain about. Just saying it's, it's like a little solution for when it gets really hot outside. Uh, the irrigation, that's all set up. They came out, got everything up and running, which is fantastic. Just in time when we're having triple digit temps to get those running, keep things watered. I had mentioned this line that's right here. I was like, I don't know what that goes to. It was sticking up there in the trees. It got unearthed when the old palm tree was removed. The crane pulled it up and I was like, huh, I wonder what that goes to. I didn't think much of it because there's an active line that goes to the sprinkler head right there. And I remembered a few years ago that a line had been chopped and they came out and fix it and I assume that this was the old line but nope that's not what it was stood out here for a long time with the guy who owns the company and we were fidgeting with it and all the zones were running and water was coming out of this one and all the sprinklers were going all around the yard which meant everything was up and running but then I was like wait a minute if everything's on how come none of the sprinklers are running over here uh oh so apparently this is the line that goes underneath the patio and connects the sprinkler system to over there. In order to repair that, you have to pull the palm tree up because the access line that goes under there for it is, well, it's down there. And as I didn't want to do that. One, it's too hot. I know it's their job to be working outside. I feel bad having them do that. They're booked up. They squeezed me in at the last minute to get out here just because it was so warm. The thing is though, I don't necessarily like the spray irrigation in this bed anyways. You can see this head that I have sticking up right here. Always wonky, I always have to straighten it out. It gets broken a few times here and I always have to fix it. This raises up higher, but it just doesn't work. The angles everything has to move at, it's hard to tell in the video, but this is all bermed up fairly high. Everything has to drain down into a series of drains that runs under the patio and out to a storm sewer. So there's some pretty steep inclines here. I mean, for a garden bed that's narrow, I'd consider a steep incline. Because of that, all these sprinkler heads have to be angled in a manner where they spend most of their time just getting the foliage wet, which eventually does get down to the roots, obviously, I and mean, it still works, but it's not the best way to do it. And this is just one area from what? From right here all the way down to over there by the door that goes into the house. Pretty easy to have that up on drip and I already have drip run through most of it. So I said, don't, don't worry about it. I'm not gonna have you come out here, triple digit temperatures and then have to get a crane to pull the pump. Like it's no. Maybe next year before the palm tree comes back from storage and that spot's open perhaps, but I really think that drip would be a better way to go for this entire area anyways. Don't you think? I think so. It's already mostly up on drip, so it's like, it doesn't really matter. This spot right here, I'll have to run some like soaker drip through, but that's again, not a big deal. And for right now, I have this guy right here. That's saving me a lot of time. I've been spending my mornings out here getting the drip reconfigured, somewhat reconfigured. The main thing was getting the timers up and running. They're going. Shockingly, everything works. That never happens. Every year I have to replace at least one timer, but everything's working. So really all I have to do is I need to add drip to these two big blue pots because I, I don't know, the line's just gone. Maybe I, I don't think, maybe I didn't have those two on drip last year. I don't know why I would have taken them off other than maybe I just didn't get around to repairing something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
Those need to get reset onto drip. This right here, hey turbo, this big pot is running off of three of these adjustable drip emitters right here, which I really like. They have a nice spray pattern to them. I use those a lot, but last year I started moving over to the uh, quarter inch drip, well, I'll show you. Quarter inch drip line. This one has holes every six inches. It's a lot more efficient as far as the water pressure is concerned. So that's why I prefer these. The only problem is you go through a lot of the vinyl tees, which is what these are right here because you have to create a loop that goes around for them to connect back into themselves to have the proper water pressure to run from your main line. And if you don't do that, then you have to have a lot of goof plugs. I'm not a goof plug, so I only have four left. That's okay because I think I only need them for one container. Can I explain this or show this? I'm trying to think logistically here. I'll explain it because what I have to do, you're not going to be able to see because essentially I'm going to have to weave this line through all the annuals in that pot and i'm going to try and have it go around a few different times in a few different loops you won't be able to see that there's too many plants in the pot it's going to be kind of tedious so what you're supposed to do if just having a single loop inside of your pot isn't enough then you need to have a four-way adapter which is going to look like one of these t's right here except it will have another spoke another fitting coming off of it so it you know a four-way adapter instead of a three-way and you can run up to another t and have a basically you can make a small circle that connects to a big circle on the outside maintains better water pressure that way all right but the thing is like i just i don't <laughs> i don't feel like doing all that i know you should always do something right the first time it's better than having to fix it later but i don't have that many plants on the same zone as that flower pot over there so i'm not really all that concerned about the water pressure and I don't feel like we're into the hardware store just to get some four-way connectors. I don't think that seems necessary. So that's what I'm working on right now because with these temperatures, I think having the drip up and running probably should be my first priority because it's holy freaking hot. And then I need to work on this space over here. I think move some more plants over there, get the tie moved over there, probably move this windmill palm and just overall just try and make it look better. We'll get to that here in a minute. It's probably the next thing you'll see. I already explained all the stuff with the drips. Let me just move on from there. One of the fun things about drip is there's so many little parts and pieces, just tons of accessories. Lots of little pieces that you can easily forget that you need. It's something you have to plan out. This is up and running, going all the way around there. See how that hooks in right here to the line that goes through to the main line on the timer. I have everything cut and ready to hook these three pots up to that main line that runs the timer. And I totally forgot that I don't actually have the tubing to run it from here to that line, the joys of drip. It's up and running, it's totally worth all the hassle of getting it set up. Just, oh, always forgetting the little pieces. And why does I hold my camera like that? Luckily though, I remembered I have a giant package. Been sitting around for a few weeks. This is from Drip Depot. I had ordered a fair amount of supplies. To get the noisy stuff out of here. This has been sitting around for a while. I had mentioned that I wanted to upgrade some of my units to one inch drip line just for better pressure that's going to be a separate video i have a separate video multiple videos but there's one specifically like just about setting up drip irrigation we'll link that down below if you'd like to see something that's more specific about everything in several weeks i've forgotten what's in here it's nice they threw in some suckers anybody want a sucker you want one raspberry and orange i'm not eating those things i'm not swimming a mile a day to throw it away on suckers i don't think so there we go luckily apparently i had planned ahead and I have, how much is in here? 500 feet, quarter inch drip, and it's nice, flexible drip. Sometimes these tubes are more rigid, which I cannot stand. If you're ever out shopping for wine to run your drip off of, if it's like a hard plastic, I wouldn't buy it. Not with the quarter inch line anyways. It's different with the main lines that you punch your drip into, but with the ones that you want to be more flexible and you can get your fittings into, Having it rubberized helps an awful lot. And then there's all this, lots of fun stuff in here. Look at all that. Oh, I am glad I remembered that I had this sitting in the garage. These are for the HVAC in my basement. That has nothing to do with anything here. Goof plugs, good to have. We're just talking about how I'm running low on those. And then these right here are inline troublers. Okay, these are cool. I'm gonna show you these. The adjustable drip head, like I showed earlier in the video, but these have an input and or output on each end so you can run them in a loop. Instead of having to have a bunch of T-valves and lots of cuts in the line to make them work, they can just go in one circle. Those are good for larger planters that need a lot of irrigation. These right here are another adjustable one, but they have a vortex head. So instead of lots of little holes that come out with the water, it's more of like a 
fan spray that comes up. These are just the regular adjustable drip heads that I showed you before. These are more of those ones that are inline. T-valves, good. I needed those. I know I just showed you a giant bag of those, but they keep breaking. But I'm trying to connect them into the line and they're just snapping to pieces. More goof plugs, one inch adapter so that I can run a one inch main line right here that you punch into. I can get that hooked up to the hose because the hose go with a three quarter or a five eighth. So I need something that reduces down. I'm going through this very quickly. I figure this might be kind of boring. Nobody asked. Oh, and these right here are the end clamps. These go on the end of the pipe. You put one in through there, then you bend it down and put the other one in it. Kinks it shut, clamps it down. All right, time to get back to work. What happened? And this is why we have goof plugs. Sometimes things pop out and you gotta plug them back up. I think we're good. Got that plugged up. Things are still a mess over here in this corner. This entire spot from right there all the way around, I have to pull the whole thing up. Right now I just wanted to get it up there and make sure water's running just to get through the weekend or at least up to the weekend because it's supposed to get really hot. Again, I'm gonna cool off and get hot. That good, some drips coming out, perfect. Also, um, staples, landscape staples, useful. They help hold those down. I'm just out, so that's fine. Not gonna hurt anything to have them sitting on top of the soil like that. I think I'm done, pretty sure. At least everything big is up on drip. The queen palms, robolini, adenidia, everything that takes a long time to water by hand is good now. All right, turbo. Adenidia, the bamboo planters. This one right here, I didn't cut quite enough, so it's, See how far back it is, but that should be okay. Hard part was getting it run to the main line, this palm tree, it's you know, stuck here. It's a lot of fun trying to get work done back there, but now I should be able to just make a cut and put in a bigger piece or an extension. All right, glad to have that done, just peace of mind. Almost everything is up on automated watering at this point. I have a lot of refining I'd like to do and some things I would make changes to, but this, is, this isn't the time. It's way too hot out. It's so many things can go, well, not so many things, but as you saw earlier, it's easy to forget lots of little pieces that are needed to get a whole new system up and going. This is not the time for that. The only thing that I wanted to do, like that's left, was to get the Monstera moved over here. It needs to get back into its corner. I miss having it over there. I don't know, it doesn't seem right, right? Doesn't it feel like it's, is it backwards? I really can't tell. This is probably really loud. My apologies, I'll turn that off. I think it seems like it's backwards because one of the ropes popped off of it. So it's like hanging down instead of being up high. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Also because only two of the leaves are facing out and everything else is facing away. But looking at the newer growth that's in here, which where, right there. See that little nub? Maybe you can see it sticking up in there that should open out and face this way because they alternate as they grow along that stem. So I just, I'm thinking tie it up and maybe like twit, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'll fidget with it, it's fine. It's at least over here, it's getting a good amount of sun. I was on the fence about that because where it was before it was getting a lot, like a lot of sunlight for a variegated Monstera that is. And uh, I figured over here, it maybe wouldn't be the case, but I'm looking at it, that should be just fine. It was fine last year, but the trees have grown and you just never know how things are going to change. I also came in here and started to gut this area. It's getting old drip lines pulled up and there's just a, a mess of stuff that's collected underneath everything over the years. And this is where all that drip stuff that I was showing earlier from Drip Depot, this is all going to be going and then there'll be one line run. Hopefully the idea is to have the line run back and behind everything up across this wall going all the way down completely around the patio well to like down there on the patio and since it's a one inch line i should be able to get more pressure because that is <laughs> because as it is right now there are four lines and i still don't have quite enough water pressure for everything I spent some more time researching like upgrading to the one inch lines and it's not the same as using the half inch which is what you typically would use that's what that is down there to punch into for your drip. With the uh, one inch lines, there's like special like guides you need to use to help bend the pipe because they're, they're like curves where things are going to have to go around some things. And where those curves are, if I bend it without these little guides that will 
kink the hose. It's just, it's not as flexible. That's all I'm saying. It's not as flexible and I don't have those parts. I need to order like six of the right angle guides to get it so it can bend up and go around and do some things. So I don't want to start unearthing too much and digging around in here too much because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the, the drip is running, not to my satisfaction, but it's running. It's going to get the plants through this next heat spell that's supposed to come through here in a few days. I'm apprehensive to do much more in this spot just because I know I don't have the water pressure to add more lines onto what's right here. Don't have quite enough pieces to set up the new stuff. And also it's supposed to be like 101, 102 and we'll just like stay unbelievably warm over the next several days. Well, the weekend's supposed to cool off and it's supposed to get hot again. I don't, I don't wanna be out here doing that stuff regardless. It doesn't sound like fighting. I don't mind being outside when it's hot. That was a nice surprise. I thought I would. No, it's great. I love it. But certain things, it's like, eh, I don't think so. I like run around and play outside. I don't want to do the hard stuff. But I was thinking that I need to backfill this with some gravel. You can see it's not level. So I need to get it leveled out and then figure out what I'm going to do with the Adenidia pumps. I don't really want to leave it just sitting here. It goes right here, but the Monsteris and the, oh, I'm going to play around with things, get some gravel down maybe arrange the plants that I know have drip over here, maybe bring a few more over. I don't think it's going to be a dramatic before and after, but I don't know, I'm gonna give it like 15 minutes of work and see what I come up with over here. There we go, that's looking good. You looking good, hey Turbo, how you doing baby? Big improvement, I, okay, it was 25 minutes instead of 15. I realized that I think what had happened here was perhaps when I redid this fountain this year, I had it over too far, so I had to take the entire fountain apart. That was fun. It actually wasn't that big of a deal, but drained it out, scooted it over, put it back together, and then I was able to rotate the Monstera, make some more room in here. I came in with the shovel. You can't, the ground's disgusting. I need a power wash. I'm supposed to have some storms tonight or tomorrow, so I don't really feel like bothering with that. We haven't had significant rain in a while, so I know it's gonna be a really messy rain. So I'll power wash over the weekend. That will help clear all this gunk out of here. I did go through an edge all of this with the shovel so things can drain out properly. And I dumped, I think it was seven bags of gravel in here. I didn't want to do too much because I have to get those new lines run and I didn't want to overbury the lines that are already down there. Got a couple of trio stars hanging out on each side, not necessarily where they're going to stay. It's just where I stuck them for right now. The metanella is back over here. Normally this metanella, normally last year, just one time I had it on a plant stand in there. It's right there. I don't think that that's going to get enough light back there. So I'm gonna try it right here. See how it likes it. You can always move it around if it turns out that this isn't the sweet spot for it. That's easy enough to do. And I have things ready to be planted up in this container, but there are still some like caladiums and things coming up in here. You see that? I don't wanna go digging around and tearing up that soil just yet. Yeah, that's not for you. I better not catch you eating those flowers. And I have a heliconia coming in the mail that I'm really excited about that I want to have planted in here. I had a similar heliconia planted in this container last year and it did wonderfully. So I want to give that another shot. So this is basically just like a rough outline, but it's a starting point and I like it. I think it came out nice. Oh, and by moving this over, I had to move all of those over. So I had to unchain the palm tree and just like so it scoot everything one foot. But I think in the long run, that's actually going to be better the amount of sun in this corner really does decrease every single year as these pine trees up here grow. Just by moving everything over by just that one foot, that's really all it was. I think that that's going to be better for the plants. At least maybe having things a little bit more even with the growth in all three of these. Because typically I get a lot of growth out of the annuals in this one. And then by the time you get down to here, not as much because it's more shady and it still is but it's better than just leaving it more over there in the dark. I went back to the windmill palm. I got a new drip line run to that one because I realized the drip line that was on it wasn't working well. Added some earthworm castings and some compost and some slow release and I think that that enrichment should help it because it's gotten a little bit scraggly. It had a rough spring winter. I moved it out really early so it had to put up with some pretty awful temperatures. It did okay but it does still have some recovery to do. I think that this is nice. I need to move this palm tree still, but this is things are getting more clean and tidy. I have an order of soil that should be at the nursery for me to pick up soon. I can start repotting the mule palms and just finishing up with all those chores. Oh, and I did order Spanish moss 
This is in reference to last week's video. I have some Spanish moss coming in the mail that I can use to wrap in here with some bromeliads. I think that'll look really nice, but it's not going to be here for, I don't know, I don't think it'll be here till next week. Oh yeah, and the windmill palm. Because I got rid of the pond, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there used to be like an above ground pond thing over here. I got rid of that and I was able to scoot the windmill palm over some, looks like something fell over over there. It's going to get more light. With the windmill, I mean with most palm trees, most plants in general, all plants in general, if they're not getting the light that they want, they get stretched out scraggly. They just don't look too hot. And this one being over another two feet this way, it was really getting too much shade. This should be a much better spot for it. So hopefully that'll help thicken things out and shorten the petioles. And just have it. It'll be a nicer looking plant, that's all. Yes, the potting bench area is a mess. That's a work zone, always doing something over there. Right, there's one last thing I wanna do out here. Hopefully you can get it done before the camera overheats. It should be a pretty fast and easy activity. I could just do it before and after. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, I think so. This bubble gums just weren't working in there for me. This is a big improvement. The neighbors are having a tree removed. I ran to Lowe's, picked these up. They only had eight of them. I needed 10. Okay, I didn't really need 10. That should be more than enough. There are eight of them in there. They have a six to 12 inch spread on them. They'll probably spread more than that. It's going to be a nice, tight green carpet across the top of that pot that will drape over somewhat. I don't actually want it to drape all the way to the ground because then I have to cut it and trim it so that gunk doesn't get stuck inside the drainage in this spot. It's good. I think that looks much nicer and more tidy. There was just too much going on right here. It was taking away from all the stuff that will be going on in the background there. Okay. We're done now. Nope, we're not. I forgot. A few questions that I needed to answer. People who are hitting me up on Instagram about the bromeliad planter, the video that was prior to this one. I forgot to mention a few important things. One, should have known because I always get asked this. Don't know where this came from. It was a gift. It was either Grandin Road or Front Gate. I don't think they sell it anymore. The second thing, no, this is not a real clamshell. It's fake. Didn't take real giant clams out of the ocean so I could put flowers in them. Not on board with that. I don't like that. The size is, I think it's 31 or 32 inches across and 16 inches deep. That's why there's so many plants in here because it's, it's pretty big. It can fit them. And it does have drainage holes in the bottom. Oh, and then the other thing was in the video, I showed a whole bunch of catharanthus and ended up only using two of them. I had the others in here and I just, I thought it looked too busy. It was taking away from everything because similar to the container that I just did underneath that Alexander palm, I didn't want just too much going on in the front that was going to distract. That's why I like the lemon coral sedum because it can be pruned very easily so that I can keep the shape and make, have the impression of the scalloped edges in there and not have things popping out from all above that just have too much color. Okay, it's too hot to think. I hope that was a good enough answer. It's been about a week now, or it has been a week. There's a tiny bit of scorch starting to show, but considering triple digits, I'd say this is holding up really, really well. Ooh, bottles are sweating. So am I. Well, kind of. Actually, not as much as I would have expected. Thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. It, uh, I forgot. Okay. Another thing. Just because I know I'll get asked, the Vista bubble gums that I pulled out of there are going to go in the hot tub planters, which are behind me. And I'll probably do that, like, right now, because it's too hot to just leave them sitting on the ground. Off camera, because I know this thing, like, I can't believe it's only overheated twice. I think I have, like, maximum two minutes left of recording time before I'm going to need to get in and cool it off. Like how I try and go over the birdcage so you don't see the mess on the table and I can zoom in on the mess over here. It's not really a mess, but it's it's uh, not, not quite where I want it, but it's getting there. That is so pretty. Love the condensation look. Makes me feel cool just looking at it. Oh, and older viewers, a reminder when it's hot, really everybody, it's hot. Be careful. See people on YouTube outside doing the garden stuff when it's really, really hot. You got to remember that these videos are edited and we can take breaks from the heat and oftentimes do things in the morning when you've been doing it for a long time, you know how to regulate and I mean I have a fan over there the pool right there AC in the house shade right here I have a cooling cloth I can put on my neck if I want to I mean I'm not like Babe Ruth stuffing cabin under my hat to try and stay cool but when things are edited and put together in a video it makes it look like it's not a big deal just saying be careful the majority when I look at my analytics for people like 25 to 44 so my age range but I know I know plenty of y'all out there talking about your grandkids be safe out there in the heat see what we got coming next week why does it say very hot with a cactus on 98, but 102 the next day, it just says sunny. Like they need to swap out what they consider very hot. Hot and humid, that's just, that's gonna be miserable. The cactus is there to indicate low humidity. We will see about that. It's usually way off, but if they're right, I will 
take it. Okay, like I said, hope y'all are doing well. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. This is beautiful over here. Bye-bye.